thank you, Lord. Say this. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Power in the name. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Power in the name. There is power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Power in the name. Somebody lift your hands and say, There is power in the name of Jesus. Power Power in the name. Things change, things. Things change when we call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. Things change. Things change when we call you Jesus. Things change when we call your name. I'm free. I'm free when I call you Jesus. I'm free when I call you. We bless your name. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, say, neighbor, I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. Look to the other side. Say the same thing. Neighbor, I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. My God, sing this. Eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard, ears haven't heard, the kind of blessing, the kind of blessing that's about to fall on me. Say this, victory is here, say, victory is here, kick your feet out the door, kick feet out the door, oh my God, God's doing a new thing.
ready for overflow. How do you get ready for overflow? You get bigger baskets. You get bigger containers. See if that lady that 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 prophet went to and said, "Get all the containers you can get. Get everything you can get." Man, I don't know about y'all, but I've been asking neighbors for vessels to put it in. Because everything she had in front of her, God filled up. I'm going to challenge you this morning. Get ready for overflow. Get bigger containers. Expand your borders. Get ready to receive something you've never seen before. Get an expectation on the inside of you that today is my day and I will not let go until I get my blessing. I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. I'm getting ready to see something I've never, my family's never seen. I said, I'm getting ready to see with these eyes. Oh, something I've never seen. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to see. Something I've never seen. I'm getting ready. Ready for all. Said I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I'm telling you, get ready, ready for the overflow, ready for the overflow. Thank you, Jesus. Lift your hands all over this place like you're actually receiving something this morning, like you're receiving it this morning. Oh, I receive it, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God bless your name. Oh, no, 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 Lord, I'm desperate for your touch. I'll wait for you. 
your name, God. We bless your name, God. Right now, God. Worthy, worthy. Somebody bless the name, oh God. Say, say your name. Oh, yeah. 
him this morning I said you can trust him this morning thank you God because it's a blessing assurance and Jesus is mine oh a To near of salvation, purchased of God. See, I'm born of His Spirit, and I'm washed in His blood. See, this is my story. And I'm praising my Savior all the, all the day long. I don't know about you, but this is 
my story. This is, this is my song. I'm praising my Savior. Oh, heavenly Lord. It's a perfect submission. Oh, oh, is that rest? I am my Savior, a happy and blessed. See, I'm watching and I'm waiting, looking above. Lost in his spirit, and I bought by his love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. if he's your savior take about 30 seconds and just give him a praise it's okay praise is comely in the house of god there ought to be a shout of a king among us i said there ought to be the shout of a king among us hallelujah hallelujah Woo! i feel god up in this house today yes well, look at your neighbor and say, you're at the right place. Say it. You're in the right place to have a Holy Ghost encounter of the day. You can be seated for just a moment. The ushers are coming. My Jesus. How many of you is glad you're in church today? Boy, I am. I, hey, I'd rather be here than in the hospital. I'd rather be here than in the best prison in the state. I'd rather be here than anywhere, really, with God's people and God's presence. That's, that's life to me. That's what it's all about. Amen. Hey, I've been saved 41 years, and you know what? I've, I, we've always tithed. We've always given offerings, and God has never failed us. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, church, listen. When you get in covenant with God with your 10%, and you say, God, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to honor you. He promised you. He said, I'll open the windows of heaven. And I'll pour out blessing more than there's room for you to receive. It might not always be in your checkbook, 
But it could be in your family, it could be in your help, it could be favor on your job. But God is true to his word. For those who will tithe and honor him, he will bless. If you know that to be a fact, clap your hands one more time. Yeah. By the way, if, if you're our guest here today, church, do we appreciate our guest being with us today? We hope you found the family. We hope you find the home. If, if we didn't get your information coming in the door on the way out, my wife and I will be up at the front. There's a little desk up there. We'd like to get a card on you. We're not going to come visit you. We're not going to call you. We're not going to quiz you. We just want to send you a text or an email and just say thank you for being with us. And, uh, you know, we just want to let you know we acknowledge you and we appreciate you being here. Well, get your offering. Put it in your hand. Around here, we speak blessing over our family during our offering. The Bible says you can decree a thing and it shall be established. So we believe in decreeing the goodness of God on our family because of our giving, because that's what God said. Amen. So I want my family, some of my grandkids, come on up here. I got three out of seven here. That's pretty good, isn't it? You know, I, it registered with me the other day. Yeah, you can stand back to your feet. We're getting ready to do it. It registered with me the other day. Lamar, when you got seven grandkids, you're getting to be old. <laughs> But praise the Lord. Job lived to be full of age and old time, years, long years. That's where I'm going. Job lived to be 140, 40 more years after his trouble. I'd like to make it to 100, wouldn't you? How many of y'all would like to make it to 100? Yeah. Healthy and vibrant and strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, take your offering and put it in your hand. Babies, put your hands on this family offering right here. And say this with me. Say, in the name of Jesus. In the name. Because I'm a giver, and because God's promised and He's faithful, I'm blessed. My family's blessed. My grandkids are blessed. We're blessed coming in and going out. Everything we touch is blessed. Favor, health, goodness lives in our houses. Look at your neighbor and say, you know it's true. No, it's true. Hey, guys in the back, I need you to put a clock on that back screen, or I might preach to 3 o'clock today if you don't put a clock back there for them. Come on up get your offering, okay? Oh, Thank you. Your season to be blessed. God made you a promise. You should be blessed. You're going to open up the window for your own. You know, you know, you know you're blessed. Go ahead and say it. I'm blessed. blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me say what an honor it is to be back in the house of God. As you know, Pastor Landon and I, we've been gone this past week to the Dominican Republic. And we were so blessed to be a part of the inauguration of our 35th congregation there on the island. And all of that is because of you and your faithfulness to give unto set free missions. And I tell you, we had a tremendous trip, a powerful trip. Pastor Landon, if you will come join me, I want you to say a little something because this was his first mission trip. Amen. And I want you to know he was a trooper. He did tremendous, and God really used them. Tell us a little. One thing in particular that stood out to me when we were there is that there was, in one of the churches, one of the, the benches that they sit on, it was probably about, it was a piece of wood, about 12 inches, not nowhere near as big as this or as comfortable as this, and the thing about it is that they're excited to be there, they're hungry, they're passionate, they have zeal and intensity, and I'm not saying that we don't, but it inspires me, and I think that we took the Pentecostal pandemic there, but we're bringing the hunger that they have back. So, Amen. Amen for that. We were having a little bit of a technical difficulties, but if, if it is up and running, I think we got the missions just to show you a few little highlights from the trip. Do we have that, guys? I 
I hear some audio. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we don't have it, we, oh, here it is. Here it is. They're different. Son diferentes. That's okay. Está bien. Maybe they do church differently. Quizá dan su culto de forma diferente. Maybe they like different worship songs. Quizá les gusta canciones diferentes. Maybe they have different styles of preaching. Quizá tienen otro estilo de predicación. That's okay. Eso está bien. But they have the same mission. Pero tienen la misma misión. And that is to reach the lost. Es para alcanzar a lo perdido. That is to preach Jesus. Es para predicar a Jesús. Es andar en el poder del Espíritu Santo. Esta es unidad. Y así es que Dios bendice. Ese es el derramamiento del Espíritu Santo. Esa es la pandemia pentecostal. Y eso cambiará el mundo. The Bible also says that if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can say to a mountain, be moved from here to there, a esta montaña, quítate, and it will be moved. Y hecho te falla y se so I don't know what mountains you are facing, Yo no sé cuál montaña estás enfrentando. but if you have faith as a mustard seed, Pero si tienes fe como un gran de mostaza, you can look at that mountain. Podrás mirar esa montaña. You can look at that battle. Puedes mirar esa batalla. You can look at that warfare. Puedes mirar esa guerra. You can look at that storm. Puedes mirar esa tormenta. And say in the name of Jesus be moved. Y en el nombre de Jesús muévete. And it will be moved. Y se va a mover. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to know God is moving just 
as he is here in Easley, South Carolina, as set free, God is moving on the island of the Dominican Republic with those 35 set free churches. And again, we thank you from the bottom of your heart for sending us and allowing us to be a part of this and giving so faithfully every month. I'm about to get out of the way and turn it over to Pastor, but let me make a couple of quick announcements. Connections class for all of you who are new to set free and have registered is this afternoon at 5 p.m. in the large group room in this hallway. Please come. It's going to be a tremendous time. You're going to learn more about who we are and have an opportunity to meet the leaders and, and get connected to what God is doing here at Set Free Church. And also, Pastor Joe and Kelly uh, wanted me to announce this. They're starting a new dismissal. Uh, disciple kids will be dismissed again from this doorway after service, and then Freedom Kids in the coffee area. That's where they will be dismissed after service. Direct your attention to the screen for this week's edition of Need to Know. Need to know. Hallelujah. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Anna Kay, and I'm a volunteer here at Set Free. If this is your first time visiting with us, thank you so much for joining in worship with us today. Please feel free to stop by the welcome table and say hi. We'd love to meet you and get you a free gift. If you're watching online for the first time, take a quick second and click on the new to set free link in the description or visit setfree.cc forward slash first time and click viewing online. After you fill out the quick form, our first impressions team will be in touch. May 14th is our annual Souls for Souls 5K race. All proceeds go to the Dream Center and Predestined Outreach. We'll share more about that later. But in the meantime, if you are interested in personally sponsoring or having your company sponsor the race, please pick up a sponsorship form in the lobby or visit setfree.cc or the Church Center app. That's all for this week. Kids can now be dismissed. Volunteers are in the back to safely walk you to class. I'm Anna Kate with this week's Need to Know. Now back to the service. Give them kids a hand as they leave, would you? Well, I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to try to preach up here. As you know, we're, we're, uh, we're getting ready to, to hit Roku and Apple TV and all, them, all those other platforms. And the media team is telling me that they're getting the bald spots in the back of people's heads while I'm preaching because I'm down here. Don't nobody touch your head. Hey, I don't have that yeah, against you for being bald. I mean, I can, I can feel your pain, right? But, but, uh, but I thought I'd try up here today. What's going on? Lord God, there's a devil in this house today. Somebody fix it. Well. Uh, what I do know is that Nathan is out of town today, right? Our, our main media guy. Okay. Yeah. Take your Bible and turn to Job chapter 23. Once again, all of our guests, we're glad that you're here. Have you ever had a season? I feel like I'm going to talk to some people today. Have you ever had a season in your life when it, it just seemed like God was nowhere to be found? I mean, you pray, you press, you ask, and he's just silent. Has anybody ever here, in here ever had that? Raise both hands if you have. Raise both hands and a foot if you're in the middle of that now. He's just silent. Job was going through a season like that. And Job said in uh, Job chapter 23, in verse 8, I want you to look at this. Job said, Behold, I go forward, but he's not there. And backward, but I cannot perceive him. On the left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand, and I cannot see him. But he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, 
I shall come forth as gold. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the honor of preaching and teaching your word today. I thank you for every person that's here. I invite you, Holy Ghost, to do a work in the midst of us. And we will receive it. And everybody said, Amen. In a hard place, Job cries out. He says, God, where are you? I'm looking, but I can't find you. God, you you seem unconcerned. You're silent. Right when I need you the most, God, I can't find you. Job had lost his family. He'd lost his wealth. He'd lost his health. His friends had turned on him and started accusing him for all of his trouble. And now the worst thing that a man can feel, he feels like he's lost his God. He can't find God. He can't hear God. He feels like God has abandoned him. Has anybody ever felt that way? He said, I go forward, but I can't find you. I didn't quit, God. I didn't turn back in the middle of this hard time. I kept going forward. I kept doing the way I knew to do. I'm hurting, I'm confused, I'm discouraged, but I'm still moving in the right direction, God. It's hard for me to do, but I'm going the way I know to do, God, and I can't see you anywhere in my future. Then he said, so I decided I'd go backward. He said, maybe there's something in my past that can explain my present trouble. Maybe I'll look at my childhood, something happened to me in my childhood to cause this, or maybe there's something in my family tree, or what did I do? To cause this today. And he couldn't find God. He couldn't find no peace and nothing backwards. So finally he says, well, I'll just go to the left. I'll just get real extreme. I'll just jump on out there. Yeah, I said the left is real extreme. I'll just get real extreme. So he just got on out in left field. He said, this stuff ain't working. All this prayer, all this Bible, all this church. I'm going to try something else. I'm going to switch religions. Maybe he went through the Catholics, the Episcopals, the Wesleyan, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Church of God, the Assemblies of God, the people like we are. He just went through all of them. He he couldn't find God nowhere. So so he said, I'm going to get me some New Age crystals and stare at them and hum. Hmm. Maybe I'll try some witchcraft and burn some incense. But he couldn't find God. Lamar, know where he looked. He couldn't find God on the left. She said, well, I'm just going to go back to the right. I'm going to go right. I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to say the right thing. I'm going to get my thinking right. Still didn't get a breakthrough. He's just going through the motions. I said he was doing the right thing. And he felt like he was just going through the motions. I know I'm talking to somebody in here today. So he concluded. In verse 10 there he said, But he knoweth the way that I take. He knoweth. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. You know what he said? He said, I don't know. Listen to me. I don't know where God is, but God knows where I am. Yeah, you can amen me. God knows where I am. And even when, even when I can't see him, when I can't feel him, when I can't perceive him, he still knows where I am. Am. Let me tell you something today. God has not forgot you. God not has deserted you. He still knows your name. He knows the number of hair on your head. He knows your fingerprints. He knew you before He formed you in the womb. He has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And your Bible says that He that started the good work in you will complete it. Give God a praise no matter what you're going through. That He's faithful. <laughs> then He said, well, when he's tried me, I'm going to come forth as gold. What he was saying is, I don't know why I'm going through this, but I'm just going to, in the midst of this, I'm just going to put my trust in him because I know he's working something valuable in me. Let me tell you something today if you're going through it. See, you, y'all don't even know. This last week, my wife and I went through five days of the most intense spiritual warfare to elders and something and their wives know and one or two people know. I mean we and I'll tell you more about it next week. I gotta get past some things this week. But we went through some major break you down, drive you crazy warfare this week. But you know what I decided him, just like Job just did. It don't matter what I'm going through. God is working something of value in my life and in your life. You got, to, you got to get that in your mind. It might be hard right now, but God sees the end, and God's doing something in my life. Let me, let me, I want to read you a scripture just in case you think you've got to figure everything out in your life. 
Romans chapter 11 and verse 34 says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord? And who hath been his counselor? See, let me surprise you with something. You won't always understand what God's doing. There's many times and many things that happen, and you never understand them. You look back, and I'm five years later, and, you, and some of y'all are shaking your head. You look back later, and you'll still go, why did that happen? I don't understand why we went through this. But be careful, church. Be careful that when things happen that you don't understand. And you feel like it's unfair. Why did that happen to me? You feel like it's unfair. You listen to what I'm telling you. You better trust God anyway. And you don't ever sour in your spirit on God. I've decided, this is just Steve talking. Steve has decided that when it gets backwards, when things go sideways, when it's hard, when it's difficult, when I can't find God, when he's silent, here's what I've decided. God, I was praising you in the good times. I was praising you before I came into this time. And so right here in the middle of this time, it might not be my choice time, but I'm not going to lose my praise. I'm going to still give you praise. You was God on the mountain. You God down here in the valley. You the same God in the middle of my trouble as you was in the middle of my victory. And you the only hope I got. The devil ain't going to steal my praise. I'm going to give my God praise in spite of it. God doesn't owe us an explanation. You can see up the street, but God can see around the corner. So he's seeing things that you don't see. Sometimes, if he tried to explain to you what's going on, you wouldn't even understand what he's telling you. Job felt deserted. He felt like God was getting quiet on him. Over in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, we come up on another family that certainly felt like God was silent. And they even had a right to feel like he didn't care and he had deserted them. But they didn't see, Brother Booth, what he was doing in the long time. They didn't see what he was doing. I was going to tell you today, those things you don't understand, you just don't see what God's doing. We get over in the Gospel of John. We come up on Mary and Martha and Lazarus, two sisters and a brother. Mary and Martha and Lazarus all lived in the same house. Back, uh, in those days, they still do today. They, they built, you know, they have a mom and daddy floor, and first one get married, put another floor, and then another, they have two or three floors up. One family lives in the whole house. Thank God we don't do that today. I love my sons and daughters-in-laws and son-in-law and daughter, but I don't want them living in the. And they don't want me. My daughter's back there shaking her head. They don't want me living with them either. But Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are Jesus' friends. They're just not ministry acquaintances. They are buds. They're friends. I mean, Jesus, when he has time off, you find him. He's hanging out at their house. He sits at their table. They're just friends. They're not, you know, do you have friends in your life that have nothing to do with your church, nothing to do with your work, no, no connection to you except you're just friends. You're connected. That's the way Mary... And Martha were. They were part of his inner circle. Lazarus turns sick. And he's dying. So they sent a runner to Jesus. Jesus. I can imagine that runner. He comes running up to Jesus. And he says, come quickly. Lazarus is dying. He turns around. Jesus said, oh, this, this, this sickness is not unto death. So he turns around and he runs back home. And uh, he comes back and he says, he said this is not unto death. They said, is he coming? Yeah, he's coming. All the neighbors know that this family is tight with Jesus. They know Lazarus is dying. So they're expecting that Jesus is going to show up. He's going to heal him in some grand fashion. And they're going to have a Holy Ghost time. They're going to throw a big praise party. Jesus has healed Lazarus. So they're waiting. An hour goes by. Two hours go by. They wait all day long and now it's dark. They ask your servant, did he tell you he's coming? Yes, yes, he said he's coming. He said it's not under death. But why isn't he here? 
And then if you look in verse 6 of chapter 11, verse 6 says, And when he heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. He waited two days. So that question is certain. Didn't he understand what you told him? Did you make him to know that Lazarus is dying? Yes, I told him. Did he say he's coming? Yes, he said he's coming. This sickness is not on the death. And Lazarus died. People are watching Mary and Martha. Let me tell you something. There's people that will never read a Bible that will read you when you're in the middle of trouble. They want to see how your God works for you in the middle of your problem. Lazarus is dead now. Two days going on third day. And Jesus shows up. And of course they run out to meet him. Lord, if you'd have been here, he, he, he wouldn't have been, he'd be alive. Jesus, you know the story, Jesus says, I'm telling you, he, will, he is alive. He will be alive in the resurrection. I'll raise him up. But then I want you to look at this. Look in verse, um, look in verse 15. Look, 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 verse 14. Then said they, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Look at verse 15. Wait a minute now. This is, this is their friend. They're tight with Jesus. They sent to him two to three days ago. And Jesus says, oh, Lazarus is dead. I'm glad for your sakes that I was not here to the intent that you might believe. Jesus, help me not to get offended at you. Help me right now. Wow, Jesus, we told you that Lazarus was sick and Lazarus was dying. And not only was you late getting here, and he died before you got here, now you're going to come up in here and you're going to say, well, I'm glad I wasn't even here. That's what he said, didn't he? I was glad I wasn't here. He said that you might believe. Well, we were believing for you when we sent for you. We were believers. We'd seen you been healing people all over everywhere. And we sent for you to heal Lazarus. It's not that we don't believe. Well, what, what was Jesus talking to him about believing for? Maybe he was saying, I want to do more for you than you've ever believed for. I'm glad I wasn't here so, so you could believe. I'm, I'm going to give you just three observations real quick. I won't even be long today out of this story that, that I think bear repeating. The first thing that I see here is, watch this. It's real simple. God is still working when you think it's over. I said, you think it's signed, sealed, done, and over with. And God is still working. You think you've lost the battle. It's all concluded. It's finished. But you've got to remember... You're in time. God's in eternity. They thought Lazarus is dead. It's over with. We didn't have his funeral. We didn't put him in the grave. No good can come out of this now, Jesus. It's finished. It is what it is. It happened. God didn't hear us. You didn't answer our prayer. Listen to what I'm telling you. You're going to see when you think it's over, God's still working. Tell somebody. Look at somebody and say this. The enemy told you it's too late for a turnaround. Oh, about three of y'all said that. Say it. Say, the enemy told you it's too late for a turnaround. Now say this real loud, but we serve the God of a turnaround. Late is in the time element. When you're talking about late, you're talking about time. When you're talking about the God who is from everlasting to everlasting, He don't worry about time. He will pull from the past. He'll pull from the future. He'll put it right in the middle of the time and just disturb everything. Yeah. 
I feel like it's oh, I, it's happened. I, uh, what good can come out of this? Listen to this country boy preacher say it in a country boy language. It ain't over. It ain't over. It ain't over. As long as there's a God in heaven, it ain't over. First thing is, when you think it's done and over with, God's still working. Here's the second thing. Listen to what I'm telling you. God's delays are always deliberate. Why would he let me go through this? He has a reason. His delays are always delivered. Listen, verse 6 tells you plainly, he loved them. God loved them, and he stayed away from them anyway. Listen, he let his friends go through pain. He let them have the heartache, the mental anguish, the weeping, the crying, the brokenness. And he loved them. Why didn't he heal Lazarus? He heals everybody else. Why is this happening to my family? That, they deserve it more than me. God's delays are deliberate. If, if Lazarus' death had been averted, the tremendous miracle of the resurrection would have never happened He'd have just been another one that Jesus healed. But instead, his resurrection was a greater miracle than his healing would have been. Did you hear what I just said? And it might just be that you believe in God for something, and you're stuck on that one thing, and you're saying, God, do it, do it, do it, and God's not doing it. And God might just be saying to you, I want to do something greater than that. Hang on. You're going to hurt a little while. You're going to suffer a little while. But all things work together for good. And when this thing passes, you're going to see that I had a higher purpose than what you were thinking about. If Jesus hadn't let that family go through the heartache, the pain, the crying, the sorrow, the mental anguish, then that resurrection wouldn't have happened. And the news of who Jesus is and what he had done wouldn't have spread over all of Israel and we wouldn't be here 2,000 years later talking about he raised a dead man. God's delays are always deliberate. Because God wants to work a greater miracle than what you've been asking him for. Or what you need. He wants to not only heal. He wants to do beyond what you've got the capability of praying and asking. Isn't that what he said? He'll do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. That's what he said. Listen, Steve has decided, and I hope you have too, I don't care how much heartache I'm going through. I don't care how much disappointment in life I have to go through, and I've been through plenty. But that's what it takes. If heartache and disappointment and hard times is what it takes to keep me safe and to keep you focused on God and to get us into heaven, then, Lord, I say bring it on because I know he's going to do exceedingly. But count me in. If this is the way i got to go to get to heaven, count me in, Lord. Just put my name in the Lamb's book of life. I don't, you know, i got a few years left. Whatever I'm facing means nothing to what the Lamb's book of life is going to mean when I get there. He's still working. I'm just going to trust him. If I don't understand for a season, I'm still going to believe in who he is. He's still working. Even if I can't see him in his delay, or deliver it and he's going to do something greater thank God his ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts I heard somebody say the lower you I heard this said the lower you fall the higher you bounce back fall low because God's going to match the lowness of your fall with the highness of your comeback. Hear what I'm telling you today. God will match the lowness of your fall with the highness of your comeback. Give him a praise if you expect that to happen. <laughs> Listen to me. Pain is, the, pain is an indicator of the glory to come. If you don't get nothing else I said today and you're in pain today, hear what I'm telling you. Your pain is an indication of the glory that you're going into. Here's the last thing I want to show you. And don't miss this. 
in verse 3. Verse, where am I at? Verse. Okay. I'll say that, Jesus. Listen to what I'm, listen, listen. Let me just talk to you out of my heart. Jesus groaned in his spirit. Two times it says he groaned in his spirit. He wept because they wept. He felt pain because they were feeling pain. Think about this. Jesus, Jesus delayed on purpose. And he knew that his plan was bigger than anything they could think. He hadn't, he hadn't raised nobody from the dead that they knew of at that point. And he allowed them to go through that. God, where are you at? God, why did ha- that happen? But he wept with them. See, here's what I can promise you. I can't promise you that if you'll serve God, it's going to be a, a bed of roses and a buttercup life. But I can promise you that we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. I can promise you that when you're going through it, he's going through it with you. I can promise you that. He's there with Lazarus and he weeps. Even though he knows he's about to do greater above and beyond what they could ever imagine. He's about to do it. But he comes up on them and he weeps. He's so caring that he weeps. He hurts because they're hurting. Even though he knows in his eternal plan it's going to all work out, he's so compassionate that he sees them in their moment of pain and he hurts for them. Look at Jesus in this. Hey, if your child hurts, you hurt with them, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 53 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. You're not in this alone. I I won't say that to somebody today. I slowed down and I'm calming down on purpose because somebody needs to hear this. He's carrying your grief and he's bearing your sorrow. And every tear you shed, he sheds one for it. But he's grabbing your tears and putting them in a bottle. When you get to heaven, all your tears are going to be in a bottle. And, God, and, and, and Jesus or an angel is going to open those tears up, and pour them out on the altar of God. And smoke's going to ascend up. It's going to smell like incense in God's nostrils. And you're going to be so glad that you held on in the middle of your tears. Jesus knows what it feels like to feel forsaken. Remember, he's on the cross. The weight, of the, sin, the weight of the world comes on him. The sin of the world. And he cries out, My God, my God, why hast you forsaken me? He knows what it's like to feel forsaken. That's why when he went away, he sent back a Holy Ghost, which he called the Comforter. How many has ever had the Comforter come up in your bedroom at night and comfort you? Here's what I have found going through life, church. I have found that when I go through a season, and I've seen it in some of you, 
When you go, I'm just trying to help you understand some things today. Is this okay? I'm, I'm not an evangelist today. I'm just trying to help you understand some things. Is, shake your head if this is okay. I'm just trying to be your pastor. So, so here's what I have found out. When, when, when I go through a season and I don't understand it, he's putting a mark on me that he's going to get glory out of for the rest of my life. Most of y'all know my story. Pronounced I'd be dead before the day was over three times, a year in intensive care. And I, I look back and I don't understand why God let me lay so near death and so sick for a year in intensive care down at UMUSC and then over here in Greenville for a little. I don't understand it. And I don't know why God, Linda, God knew all along he was going to give me a supernatural healing. He knew. Y'all were praying, some of y'all knew. Why did he wait till the evening that the doctors come in and told me, it's over, Steve. You won't live the daylight. We've done all we can do. Look me in the eyes and go, we're sorry. And walk out and leave me. Leave me and God alone. You're talking about being in the fire. Brian, I don't know why God works like that. But I'm going to show you what I do know here in just a moment. I know that when God brings you through something like that, oh, he's putting a mark on you. And he's going to use you. I've had 11 years now since that night to testify that God is a healer. I've stood before hundreds of people in a lot of different towns and in different nations and said, look at me. I'm a witness. God heals. I didn't want to go through that, but maybe God had to put me through that so somebody else could see that he heals. Now watch this. I'm going to kind of close up with this, with this scripture here. Go me over to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 17. Paul is saying this. Watch what he says. From henceforth, let no man trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. And that's an interesting word. I bear in my body the marks. The Greek word there for marks is, I've been branded. Now listen to what I'm telling you. You want to understand why you're going through some things, you're about to get some clarity, and I'm about to be finished early today. He said, I've been branded. Now a branding, here's what a branding is. When you bring old Elsie May to cow, you pull her out of the field, and you pull her up in a little wooden stall, and you push her all the way in. Then you slide a board up behind Elsie May's back legs where she can't go anywhere. And Elsie May's stuck. She's not feeling too good about this situation. She's stuck in it, and she feels like something ain't, this ain't going to end good. Any of y'all ever been stuck in a situation that you felt like this ain't going to end good? And they take a hot branding iron straight out of a fire that's red hot. And they get old Elsie made the milk cow, and stick her right on her back hip. Smoke comes off the hair as it burns. You smell the flesh as it burns. Elsie May lets out a mmm. I, I'm working hard. Y'all go easy on me. <laughs> she lets it out, boy. And she thinks, what have I done? Why are they treating me this way? I've been giving milk every day. I hadn't run away. I've been right here. What have I done? But when they pull that board out behind Elsie May and they set her free, Please hear what I'm saying. Don't lose me right now. And she goes back out into the field. Ain't nobody going to ever question who she belongs to. You know why? Because her master's mark is on her. I'm going to tell you something. I may not know where God is all the time, but he knows where I am. And I may not understand sometimes what I'm going through, but I know one thing. When I get through it, everybody's going to know who I belong to and who my God is. And when the pain is finished, I'll come out as pure gold. Everybody say, I'm turning into gold. 
His name will be written all over me. For the devil and anybody else to see. The devil will look and go, I better not touch that. God's name is all on it. Trouble may come. But when you get through it, everybody that watches you is going to know who you belong to. Don't you punk out in the middle. He's still working when you can't see him. His days, his delays are deliberate because you believe him for too little. He's wanting to do more. And he weeps with you. He feels your pain. He knows every day that you're discouraged. He knows every day that you fight depression. He knows every day that you hurt. And he feels it all. And we'll close with this scripture, Isaiah 54. He said, God said this, listen to this. He said, I hide my face from you for a moment. But in everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you eternally. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out of this. God hasn't forsaken me. God hasn't forsaken me. I can't tell you that every day you saved, you're going to have Holy Ghost goosebumps. Get up out of your bed praising and speaking in tongues and got the victory. And I can't tell you that. After 41 years of serving God and having been through some terrible battles, I can tell you this. There are days when you wonder, where is God? God, why aren't you listening? God, I've done all I know to do. And I don't know what else to do, God. This isn't working. But looking back over 41 years, I have seen that every time, let me say it again, every time, God's seen it all. God had His hand on it. And He was working His eternal purpose when I didn't understand it. I thank God He didn't do some of the things I wanted Him to do. But I thank God He's done so many things that I never dreamed of Him doing. And He's done that for you too. Now, I'm going to open this altar. They're going to sing this song. I want you to I want to switch songs on you. I want you to sing It's Not Over. Can you all do that for me? Yeah, sing It's, it's Not Over for me. And I'm going to open this altar. And if you're in here today, and you've been pushing this thing off, pushing this thing off, I know I need to serve God. I know I, know I need to commit myself to Him, but, you know, I, I just so much is wrong, so much trouble, so, so much is going on. Today's your day. You're going to have trouble either way. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have trouble either way. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth them out of them all. But I'm going to tell you this. If you're away from God, you're at the mercy of your trouble. But if you're with God, He's got you. You're in His hand. If you're in here and you're not saved, I want you to come down. If you're in here and you're in the middle of that place where you're pushing, you're pressing, and you can't feel God, you can't see God, you don't understand God, but you know you something's got to give, I want you to come stand right here. Sing it for me. Come on, that's you, come on. You need prayer, come on, right here. It's not in me. It's not in me. It's all Who else? God, I haven't felt you in a long time, but I trust you. Haven't felt you in a long time, but I trust you. Come on, elders, Pastor Caleb, y'all pray for us. Here I am, God. I know when you've tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I'm not enjoying this fire, God, but I know that you're going you're gonna to do something in me I've never dreamed of. I'm
tú estás Just be hold on It's my beat a heart God, we might understand we trust you, God. It hurts sometimes, God. But I know you hurt with me. I know you feel my pain. God, thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that even though you moved your face away for a moment, you're going to follow me everlastingly with mercy and goodness and kindness. say something real quick I don't know why I'm about to say this but I feel impressed by the Holy Spirit there's a handful of people in this place through this past season of your life you have went through one of the toughest battles that you have ever went through before and you have faced severe depression I'm not talking about this thing where you're just looking for attention you know you know those kind of people I'm talking about severe depression even even a few of you have contemplated suicide and that's something that's absolutely unlike you you don't even go to places like that but God has put a pause to this service to this altar call because he's extending unto you life and an invitation for you to come unto him just as you are you see we're not here this is a safe zone we're not here judging you condemning you beating you down we are your family we are your brother we are your sister and we want to pick you up and we want to hold you and we want to allow the holy spirit to put you back together if you're in this place and you know i'm talking to you today I want you to know I rebuke the spirit of heaviness. I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of death on your life. It's not over till God says it's over. And I want you to know God says as long as there's breath within your lungs, I've got a purpose. I've got a plan. I've got a reason for your existence. So if that's you, I want you to step out of your seat and come to this altar. And when you come down here, God's about to set you free. He's about to liberate you come on there's one I believe there's somebody else God's calling you God's calling you and as you take a step God said I'm gonna set you free I need some altar workers over here help me pray there's still somebody else there's still somebody else God says it's not over God says it's not over God said I'm not through with you I don't care where you're being I don't care what you went through. God said, I'm not through with you. The gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. It's not over. It's not over. Yeah. 
is in it. He says, it's not over. When God is not is in it, there is no limit. There is no limit. When God is in it, I said it. Come here. Hey, have you enjoyed church today? Hey, listen, you, you're going to want to be here next Sunday because I'm going to come in here with a praise report. You don't even know. I'm telling you, you don't even know what your pastor and his wife's been through this week. But we're going to come in with a praise report next week that's going to rock this place. And you're going to want to be here to hear about it, okay? Yeah, just pray for us this week. If you're our guest, again, we thank you for being here. Hey, Connections Class is at 5 o'clock. Even if you didn't sign up and you're new here and you want to know about us and be involved, just come on in at 5 o'clock. We've got a meal. We've got a uh, nursery provided. We, we won't be with about an hour, a little over an hour, maybe close to 90 minutes. And we'll have you back home before it's dark. Amen. Can you do that? Lift your hands. Let us bless you. If you're our guest here, we'll be out to the front. We'd love to meet you. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance. May He give you peace. May He write His name on your children and your children's children. May you be blessed coming in and going out. May everything that you touch be blessed. May your babies have the right career, have good education. May they have good friends. May they be in touch with the right people. May anointing and goodness come on them every day of their life. And Lord, that I thank you that you promised us that surely goodness and mercy would follow us every day of our life. And everybody said, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Go, amen. amen. You're dismissed. Thank I'm you. I'm ready to see something I've never seen. Oh!